Hello everybody. I must say the selection today of questions is one of the best ones we've had. So I think we're trying to understand each other and we're getting there. Uh, you know what I can try to help with. And I think I'm trying to, I'm getting the uh, audience that uh, provides that kind of um, interesting questions that, that I'm after. Without further ado, let's start with uh, Mrs. Chan Lebeau is saying, how far are the talks between Barcelona and Ajax for the Licht? The problem is, it's not so much the, the conversations between Barcelona and Ajax. Ajax, and this is not common, but Ajax is not a common club. They actually have said to the Licht, if you decide to go to Barcelona in the same way that the Young did it, or whatever club you go to, then it won't be a problem between clubs because they put a uh, price tag to him, not the most expensive, it could be about 60, 70 million euros. They'll be happy to get that as long as the player is happy to go where he wants to go to. So um, that's another example of why Ajax are different. So uh, the conversations uh, that have to play get placed with the permission of Ajax is between the Licht and Barcelona. Barcelona are very optimistic and uh, Bartomeu, the president, has said that he knows what the Licht is going to do. Nothing signed yet, but uh, it suggests that Barcelona are in the forefront uh, of that uh, competition, that auction for the player. Uh, they seem to be very optimistic that it will be uh, them who uh, he will choose. Of course, remember, he's very close to the young and the young will try his best to convince him to come to Barcelona. MMC Quaid 13, Michael McQuaid, he says, do you think Rafa Benitez will have an interest in the Celtic job if he leaves Newcastle in the summer? Priority is to stay at Newcastle. And the kind of offers that he got, um, which are like 10, uh, 10 million euros net uh, a year, uh, they come from Saudi Arabia and from China, which I don't think it's the place where he should go next. The battle is to stay at uh, Newcastle if he gets enough support. If he doesn't stay at Newcastle, I think the Premier League will be the competition he will have to, he would like to stay in. I think that will be the target. Another matter is uh, which club will actually go for him. Uh, because I don't think, I don't believe there's been offers yet on that department, but uh, that's where it all stands. Uh, he wants to stay in the Premier League and Premier League will be his um, big target. Andy Burns in court side of that, it says, will, uh, will we be able to build on from this year at Espanyol? There's a good team emerging, could, uh, could be a very promising few years ahead under Ruby, or will the promising players be sold off to the cycling belches, belches. The cycling belches, who oh, taken some of our players, have allowed Espanyol to be safe financially. So I wouldn't call them belches in case they get upset and they don't come back. But Espanyol is a team that sells. There's no doubt about that, but also that produces players. You're absolutely right. There is glimpses of something special happening and Ruby is the perfect manager for that. I've got no doubt about it. Uh, against Levante, for instance, Spaniel played really well and we should have won. It didn't happen for certain, for different reasons, but Mark Roca looked amazing. The plan is, uh, now that Spaniel are sorting the finances, to be able to stay, to get the team together and not to get rid of anybody of importance this season and to keep improving the side. They are looking for full backs, they're looking for centre midfielders and uh, and up front, we more or less sorted but let's see what happens with uh, Sergio Garcia but yes, I think the way for Espanyol to get us uh, happier and more involved, it's for them to build this team and give it some more youngsters like Pulido who played of course at the weekend, see him a, a bit more, Melendo is doing great uh, another player has come through uh, if Hermoso doesn't go anywhere and it seems like he will stay, it will be a, a, a you know a way of uh, of growing. There's enough pointers there to say that I'll be excited to watch Espanyol in a way that I haven't been for a long while, I must admit. But at Saikia 13 says, who do you think will progress into the finals of the Champions League? I'm not very good at, uh, uh, at um, guessing these kind of things. But I'll say one thing. I cannot... I cannot um, not trust Spurs anymore. I cannot say, oh, I don't know about Spurs. I do know about Spurs. They made to win. And uh, against Ajax, yes, it's the kind of team that by um, passing the ball around, having possession, 
But also being able to be direct uh, can hurt Spurs. But I, I have to trust them. Uh, I have to trust them. I have to feel that they have enough in them and that they can make it into the final. Uh, because they've shown to have the character for it, even when Kane is not ready. And it seems like Pochettino said that he may be, may, may be ready for the final, which will be an addition to the team. But without him, there's still enough there. This could be a, a very good year for Spurs. On the other semi-finals, Barcelona have shown weaknesses, of course. In, in the first 10 minutes against Manchester United, if he had been Liverpool, it could have been Salah, Mane, 2-0 to Liverpool, and end of the fixture, almost, even though this was the second leg. But you know what I'm trying to say. If you give the advantage to Liverpool and they take it, and normally they do, it will be Liverpool going through, unless Messi decides otherwise. Uh, Sartag9 Jane says, um, if you were to start a team with a core of four players below 22, who would you pick and why? Good one. From the top of my head. Joao Felix. I'll put him up front. Luka Jovic, if I'm not mistaken, is 21 uh, as the number nine. Mbappé, next to both of them. What a, what a, what a striking partnership. And the young or the Licht, perhaps the Licht ahead of the young as the centre back. Those will be the ones. The Licht is on the way to becoming the best centre back in Europe. Luka Jovic is a guy that is a perfect number nine in the sense that more than number nine moves around, finishes with both legs, is head of the ball, his attitude is great. Mbappé, even though he wants the ball to his feet more than ever, and it seems a little bit. Um, to have slowed down at PSG, that happens when you don't compete every week. Uh, still, you know, he's, 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 a, he's a top, top player. And Joao Felix, uh, he's magical. Uh, people compare him to Kaká. Uh, I think he can be as good as Kaká, at least. And I think he's got the right mind for it, but also uh, the right attitude and qualities to play around the box, to pass, to, uh, to determine games like we haven't seen from a 19-year-old for a while. Beautiful in the way he expresses himself, but also very efficient. Javi Gracia says Grumpy Petch uh, has had a great first full season with Watford. Has, has he been noted back in Spain? And is he on the radar of any big clubs? I'll say yes, Sevilla uh, is in the radar of Sevilla. So is Abelardo of Sporting. Two different coaches. Uh, Javi Gracia with more experience. But I think Javi Gracia wants to stay at Watford. I've got the impression that uh, having signed a new contract... This is a team that uh, obviously has made it to the FA Cup final and ahead of expectations in the uh, in the league. He wants to push on. He wants to be given the opportunity to um, not so much have a say in players coming and going because he knows that's not his role. But, but certainly uh, they will respect his demands in terms of what the team needs. The most important thing that he's done is to create an atmosphere, a culture of wanting to work, wanting to work hard and of everybody challenging everybody, and a good atmosphere as well. So that's very good coaching, very good managing, and I think he's staying. Asigit Trambas, one says Rodri to Manchester City. I don't think so. I don't think they're after him. I don't think that's the kind of player that they need. But yes, they need a player in that centre midfield. It won't be Rodri, but uh, they will try to get uh, a replacement or somebody to challenge with um, with Fernandinho, Gundagan has done a job, but I think he's better in front of Ronaldi uh, Ronaldinho, um, uh, Fernandinho, and and yes, it is one of the targets this season to get somebody in that position. If I hear any more, I'll let you know. And finally, from Opalere, Paul he says, "What do you think is the problem of United?" I was talking to Quentin Fortune last night. We were in La Liga TV together, and uh, I started saying, and then other things came out that. For United to actually challenge again, and it's going to take a while. It's going to take a while. Uh, they need to change the culture of the club. And if people think it all started with Mourinho or even with Debbie Moyes, I think they're wrong. I do have the impression that uh, in the last few years of Sir Alex Ferguson, things already were happening, transformation of the club and football, which was not being addressed and the last year of Sir Alex, he won the league, but if you remember, it wasn't already a great Manchester United. Some of those players are still here, are still with the club. And of course, a lot of things have happened. A bigger percentage of what's happened is in the post-Sir Alex era. 
But the fact that they actually went from David Moyes to Van Gaal to Mourinho suggests that there, was, there wasn't a clear idea of what um, the club wanted to do. And when that happens, you go from here to there to there to there. Well, you don't get the players that you need because you don't know if you're here or you're here. And when that happens too, there is confusion, uh, there is wasted time, there is lack of respect for leadership because you don't see what the leadership is. And without that culture of the club that gets the demands very high, without a culture of the club that gets rid of players that at the moment are a bit late for training or they don't seem to follow instructions or as you hear from the likes of Gary Neville this weekend, they just don't belong to Manchester United. Um, unless those go, you won't change anything. But that's not just the only thing to do. It's the standards, the highest possible standards, what will push them away. Uh, and that's where Oli, he knows, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer knows exactly what he has to do. He does. Everybody I'm asking around, they're all saying the same. Give him time, trust him, he will know what to do. The biggest job of Solskjaer is to recycle the side and set those standards. Before even winning, forget about winning for now, if you could. I know it's Manchester United, but it's about building and it's about process and it's about getting rid of people. And it's about getting it wrong sometimes because it's not a lineal uh, progression. It'll be up and downs. But you've got somebody now at the club that knows what those, what those standards look like. Not just him, but um, there is people around him, and not just Mike Phelan either, Kiro McKenna, another one, that know what those standards have to be. So it will be, it will be taking two or three years before you could see something strong at Manchester United and the next two or three windows will be crucial for that because it will be time to get rid of people and bring others. So no easy solutions and no quick ones but would Manchester United fans be willing to wait? It would be a fascinating time for them and one in which you could actually via the feeds, hire for the feeds as the Everton one, you could either build a team, uh, an idea and put everybody on board because it's difficult times and sometimes it's when people get closer. Or uh, those that just come for the glory of being a Manchester United fan, they may just spend the time shouting and having a go and hating. Those won't be seeing when things start getting right as proper fans. So it's your time to be a proper fan. Interesting times. That's it. See you later. I'm just going to do some work now. Bye.